All right, hello everybody and happy Monday and welcome to your daily lighting critique. Uh, so we've got a few things to go through today. We've got uh, an animation here by Diana. Um, well, the lighting of the animation by Diana, not the animation itself. Um, but And we've got a bunch of still images, but I did want to start with a question um, from uh, Jordan about light wrap and stuff. So I thought that was really um, valuable information. And so I wanted to kind of just jump into that first. Uh, so you, can you guys see my nuke screen now? Yep. Cool. Great. All right. <clears throat> so basically we wanted to talk about light wrap a little bit. So uh, I, we just had this render of Ashley. We've got this background and I, I just pulled in two different backgrounds. Um, and, and one of the things that I wanted to do was uh, all I did was I just reformatted these um, because these are different um, aspect ratios and different, different size images. So just to get them all, um, all to be the same size as this and then put them over top of this. So, so we're starting from here. And there are two things that I kind of want to talk about with this. Um, number one is light wrap. So let's just go ahead and <clears throat> drop in light wrap. So theoretically what light wrap is, is a meshing of the foreground elements with the background elements over like a two, three, four, five pixel area that just kind of like helps the areas bleed together a little bit. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look. Like, now I'm just looking through this light wrap node. Um, and you can see by default, nothing really um, happens. Like it just kind of looks exactly the same. It's because the intensity by default is set to zero. Um, if I was like, let's just turn that up to, to one. Um, and we can kind of start to so let's really blow it up. Let's say 20, 25, right? Um, so what this is doing is it's taking the values of, like analyzing the values of this background taking the brighter elements and then kind of wrapping it around a little bit. You guys see that? <clears throat> now, one of the really beneficial parts of this cool. node is this drop down right here that just says generate wrap only because this really allows you just to like isolate mm -hmm. um, how much is going on here. Now, what you can see is that the wrap only is, isn't affecting the alpha. It's just affecting the RGB um, and it's coming in as a plus operator, which means it's adding value on top of the original. So this is something that, this is kind of a rough way that I usually do it while well, I'll add it right before it goes over the top. And this will just kind of help uh, create a slight um, edge bloom from the background around the character. Now there is another another element to this as well. So I think light wrap is one thing that, cause really that, that really kind of focuses in on the highlights. Um, another thing that you can do is edge blur, which I like to do as well. Um, and that is a, um, again, like a two to three to pixel. Like if you just like look at her arm down here, it's like a super, it's just like, here's the foreground, here's the background. And photographically, um, those edges kind of get blurred or get smudged a little bit. Um, and anything that's too crisp looks, always looks a little bit too CGE to me. Um, so the way that I do that is I just look at an edge detect um, plug that in here and you can see by default, it's kind of all over the place. Like it's, it's, it's trying to isolate edges throughout the entirety of this, uh, within the RGB channel. Um, so I just always make sure to switch the channel to alpha cause I want to, I want to read like the outside of it. Right. Um, so now that we have the alpha, you can, uh, increase the, uh, erosion size, um, and actually the way that there's different types of edge detect calculations and depending on which one you use, it'll change the way it erodes a little bit. Um, but you, you, you basically, you don't want this to be too much. Um, you just want to kind of be blurred a little bit around that. You just like want to grab a couple of these pixels. And then usually what I do with that is I will then take this back into the original. Uh, so we've got a blur on this and we just want to, plug that edge detect into the alpha channel. And then, so you can see the result here, zoom in again. So now we can just blur it by like, let's let's say like three pixels is even too much. Sometimes it's just like one to two. Like I usually keep this very, very small, um, but it's, it's not like a huge difference. It just kind of smudges the edges just a touch. And, and you can see like, and now depending on what the the background is it really it'll change based on the the like whatever is happening up top so you can i mean obviously you need to adjust the values per the source 
but it kind of it kind of works both ways. Like if you just look at the light wrap independently here, you can see kind of the difference of how these two things are being processed. So um, for me, I, I, I like this a lot. Um, it's something I add to pretty much everything that I've ever done, um, just to get a little bit of a tie-in between the, the foreground and background elements there. So just wanted to share that with you guys real quick. Is there any questions about that? Is there just a benefit to doing the edge detect blur over just an edge blur node? Is there or is it just preference? Um, I, I usually do. So, so they kind of like, uh, wait, are you saying the edge detect blur over the edge blur node? Yeah. Like, is there a benefit to doing no. the two nodes that you did versus the one that there is in Nuke? No, okay. I like to see it. I mean, it's just the way that I like, it's like sure. anything else in Nuke. There's different protocols to it. I mean, there probably is. Michael Callahan can probably talk about that more than I can, but, sure. um, I, I, um, I know there are, there are different mindsets in working with Nuke. They're the ones that are like handle everything in, in, in the minimum amount of nodes. I like to kind of see things sometimes. So I like to see the step-by-step -step of each one in my tree. It helps me communicate with other artists uh, if we're yeah. working on it together. But that's just that's just kind of my take on it. Yep. But but the, the key is more about like figuring out a way to get those looks in because it is that like like actually this is good um aaron you have a you do a really good job here of like meshing the edge of this with the background and this is such like an over the top glowy like abstract look that you can get away with more um light wrap and edge blur on this but and you've done a really good job of that so and it, but if this was just like a hardened edge right here where it was like clearly ashley versus back like it would just it would feel like she was just pasted on top, like a like a magazine cutout or something, like a collage. Right. Um, okay, so now I do want to hop into um, Diana's. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, uh, Diana's uh, lighting shot here. So I think this is because I wasn't. <clears throat> I couldn't remember one hundred percent like how this was being animated, and it's nice that she's just kind of moving forward and backwards. Like this movement is much easier to light than like anything side to side because she's kind of staying in the light path a little bit. Um, and I think it actually works out really well. I mean, because it is, I, I think I think she's rocking in um, and casting just enough shadow on her head to be believable without it being like, um, without it being too harsh or weird. Um, and then she's like stepping out. So I think there's enough interaction and enough. Um, I think it's I think it was, I think it's working really well. Um, the um, Two things that I was thinking for this image, and it's also you've got like a little bit of a rack focus on it to kind of follow it. You can see it like if you look down here, you can see this kind of coming in and out of focus. But but one of the other things is is with these buttons, um, they're a little bright, and I would just kind of tone them down a little bit. Like they are a little bit pulling me down there. Um, so I would just the, just the white buttons are a little bit too bright. I would tone those down. Um, number two is there's this bright spot in the middle of the table. And I'm not quite sure what that is because it's not moving with, it seems, I don't know if that's just part of the texture or what. So I would just, yeah. I would just minimize that because, because I, okay. I would just keep it more, more consistent. And then number three is I'm wondering if there's a way to make the handcuffs a little brighter or make those read a little bit. Cause like something about her being locked up is important to this. Right. And I, I, I kind of missed that my first couple times through that. I don't see that as well. Like maybe just make them a little bit brighter. Okay. But the character lighting is looking great. Oh, and then, oh, one more thing that I was seeing. So there's like a little tiny right here, this yeah. little thing that kind of, like it just kind of pops in it's towards bright. the end. Yeah, it's just a little bright. So just, just kind of paint that out or something. <laughs> okay. That's my sound for painting things out. Um, or like just, yeah, sometimes it's like you just, like if you're working with somebody, I'll, I'll have a friend that does this. He just like puts his finger over the, that part of the screen. Like, can you just do that? Can you just make it not that? But yeah, I think this is looking great. How are you doing with that? You good. feeling good? Yeah, the she's actually updating the animation. Okay. So I'm waiting for that to see. But I think, yeah, this shot is... It, the background is good, everybody thinks. Yeah. If, if there is... Um, uh, is she taking notes on the animation? Because <laughs> there's just like her, one thing that I'm noticing, like her, hand, her, her arms go through the handcuffs. I think I think this was like an older project, so I think she probably fixed all that because there's like a part where her mouth. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. No, be there, like there are like th there's this part of my brain that I I used to have to do a lot of like um, 
it's like it's called QC quality control type stuff. And I would sit in these meetings for hours and hours and hours. And like you would you would look for the way that her arm is slightly penetrating her shirt here and things like that. And it would it would like and you, so you just like you'd have to kind of it was just like do an animation cleanup pass on things. Yeah, and so, her whole like ending pose of the shot is diff is completely different. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's great. Big update. That's yeah. the other one that stinks is when they change everything on you. Like, oh, no, I'm just going to do like a quick update. And all of a sudden she's facing a different way. And you're like, well, everything I've done is now moving. <laughs> so, yeah. Good. All right, cool. All right, let's move on to the stills. All right, we've got Aaron here. So we'll start with this guy. So we've got your newer version versus your older. I like, I mean, like overall, it's you're just working a lot better. Like it's it's just kind of brighter area. Like everything's kind of morphing together well. <clears throat> the the one thing that stands out to me is the saturation on the reflection of this of her glass right there. I think the position of it is very good. Um, maybe like a little bit smaller to kind of like give a little more breathing room to the iris, but I think the position is good. It's just m m magnitude more saturated than anything else in the image. I like the idea of it being slightly more saturated than everything, but it's like I think it's I think it's a bridge too far compared to what we're seeing in the the values for the rest of it. Um, yeah. Now, if it was like, if it was, if it was, if that color was these elements, I would totally buy it because it would be like, oh, well, that's something different as opposed to the reflection of what we're seeing around it. So, um, so there's that, uh, I am wondering if we're getting a little too contrasty in, oh, sorry, in like some of these, these areas a little bit, just because we are so surrounded by like, we're like engulfed in light that I feel like a little more fill value would come in there a little bit. That being said, I do really like the skin tone that you're achieving. The key to fill is looking really nice. I think we could probably go maybe a little brighter on the key on this side, just like a touch, but, um, but all in all, I think it's working really well. Um, how are you feeling about it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I mean, I feel okay about it. I think, just transferring over to Asus is a little weird. Like you're talking about like the contrast, right? Like Asus just immediately the contrast like increases um, when using it. So it's just, it's kind of just finagling that a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that it renders fast enough mm -hmm. that uh, I might be able to do some kind of like cool, because I, I originally planned to do a camera movement with my sushi and that one just got out of control. So like, yeah. It would have taken forever to render, but like mm -hmm. I think this one is manageable. Um, so I, just, I mean, we'll we'll just see. Like I think halfway through the month, I feel like my notes aren't aren't terribly like undoable. So um, yeah, no. I think we'll I feel I feel okay about it though. I think this is really close, and I think that um, uh, like it, yeah, because if if this were animated and this you could totally just take this note and throw it away if it's too complex but like i i just see like this whole tunnel that we're in spinning um yeah like rotating around so here a little bit just because i want to just kind of do like a left to right like kind of dolly like i was thinking the tunnel spinning um i want these little lights to like come out of the tunnel that would like kind of interact with like her torso a little bit so like there's these white specks um i would maybe rework those white specs to animate in nuke number one because right now it's just a jpeg mm -hmm. and then uh two those specs would kind of hopefully like ideally like hit her torso on the left and the right and then the other thing i was thinking would be kind of cool is to have like a little bit of rotation in each one of the crystals like almost like because it's panning and the model's obviously not going to animate, like to kind of make it feel like a moment kind of frozen in time, like a, like a slow-mo kind of thing, I don't know. Um, but we'll see. I'd rather nail the lighting than, than mess around with animation, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Um, does anybody else have any notes for Aaron? I, th I think the only other thing, too, I would, I would try and work on is, is getting a little bit more glowiness out of this glove. But... Uh, still more on the backside or on the front as well? Backside. More, more like, because I can feel it. Like, I, I just feel like, yeah, it's more about, like, the interior, the interior part of it would just be a little, a little bit glowier. Okay. What do you guys think? Not just that, of the whole thing. Yeah. Sil oh. Silence is good in these, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll take it. 
Um, all right, cool. Let's move on to Andre. You're here, yeah. Okay, so we've got the two. I've got two versions for you. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, so we'll look at this later one. Um, so we've got a little bit of this in here. So we've got a little bit of the volumetric light. Let's take a look at your reference real quick. We've got this stuff kind of coming in the back. So we've got this color palette of like these blue greens with the with the yellows in both of these examples. This one's interesting because the light on the character is so different than everything else, but I guess that's all right. Um, okay. So one of the things, one of the things, oh yeah, there it is. Um, blah, 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 I'm trying to look. So um, one of the things about the lighting on the character here versus two examples is it's, it's like, it's very, I mean, this one obviously has a little bit of motion blur on it, but it's a little bit hard edged on her and that it's like a very direct, like a very, a very harsh, like very tight shadow. Um, that's number one. Number two is like her shirt is, it looks like it's getting less light than her skin. So I would want to increase the, the shader value, um, on, on her shirt to kind of match that so that it feels like it's getting light coming. Cause like, like her key to fill ratio on her face is very, uh, stark. And then the key to fill the ratio on her shirt is much less. Um, so I would, I would boost that up a little bit. Um, in terms of um, oh, oh and then and then in terms of the lighting on her this is kind of falling into like a little bit too much of the diffuse illumination and 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 really because she's a darker skin character to kind of take down the diffuse and then focus more on the specularity of things um you kind of even see it uh like because yeah she she's she would light very differently than james mcavoy uh in this type of scenario where it would be much more about the reflections from the rain and that kind of thing than than the diffuse value on her um, oh, sorry, other one. In terms of the volumetric light, it's interesting because it's like a very strong source light coming in from behind her, and then we've got the key light coming in this way. And I think I think it would just be a matter of hmm. yeah, because like this one is the key light on this character. Um, and that's really what's driving the lighting on him. This one is much more like ambient, like it's everywhere. So I would say either make this light much more of uh, an instrumental light in what's driving her lighting or make it a little bit more like less directional. Cause you, you can see that it's going like this less directional and more about the ambient fog. Yeah. It's also like, it's interesting because the because the biggest thing I'm seeing about this when I'm looking at this is just like I'm feeling a, I'm feeling like she's not quite in this space yet, and it's like if you look at again James McAvoy like you're seeing um, like this color start to creep in here, creep in around his arm, uh, up up over the top of his head. It would be great to get that from her too, like to kind of feel these colors more on her, um, and kind of feel into that too. So let's let's open up. What do you guys think? I really like. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Who's who that? Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh, it's Okay. Hey. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I noticed, I noticed like in the background, background I think the leaves are like kind of shining a little bit. Maybe it's just a small detail, but. Yeah. Totally. 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 Go ahead, Danny. I really like the the feel that I'm get that you're getting in the scene. The the very seriousness about her. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. The, the the two the two lamps that are coming from the houses they're they're creating a very hard shadow, but I think you can even just turn them off or or like vignette it so that you really get focused on her. You talking about these two? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I do. I I do. I kind of like the color palette of these. Um, it is interesting to have that kind of two-tone thing in there. So I, th I think I think they're okay in that example. I just think, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good it's a good point. But if you want to keep that two-tone thing in there, it might be it might be a good way to keep them. Andre, how are you feeling? Does that make sense? Are you? Okay, how are you feeling? 
Does that make sense? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely, definitely makes sense. sense. Um, I, I agree that uh, she doesn't look uh, um, in the scene yet. Um, I was trying to do what you said about the, you know, the highlights around her. For some reason, I can't figure out um, both. I mean, you, you can see the highlight on her skin, but, uh, you know, the, the, the rim light on her skin. But it doesn't matter how much, how strong of a light I put, I don't get any rim light on her hair or on her clothes. So I'm going to need to figure that out. And then also I think, you know, she's a lot more contrasty than the background. Mm -hmm. So I'll need to work on that too, to blend her better into the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because like what, what, one of the things that I do when, <clears throat> like there's something like that, like you're not seeing the, the rim light on the hair or the clothes, is I would just put like a default shader Arnold shader on them and just because my guess is it has something to do with the shader values as opposed to the actual light um, so it, that that just allows you to make sure that the light is functioning the way that you think it is and if it looks good there then you can start adjusting the shader individually um, yeah, yeah you're right about the key to fill value one other thing to keep your eye on is her arms are a different value than her uh, chest or face in terms of uh, their skin color so I would just just watch out for that. They look like they might be functioning differently. It's like, oh, it's like the arms of a different person. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what I would the, 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 the arms of a different person. Yeah, the idea that I wanted to do was like as if she just stepped into a pocket of light from a lamppost or something like that. Um, but yeah, I see I see the the, the difference in the arms also. I do, I do like the idea of stepping into a lamppost, and it's fine. Like I said, looking at the reference, you can kind of see that you don't necessarily need to see that. Like, maybe, I don't know. I, I, if it was me, I would add just like a little bit of haze or something in there to indicate a light coming in. Um, just because on a still shot, you don't necessarily... Like, these shots are in sequences, like this this one. It's part of a sequence where that light's probably introduced in other shots, and this is just reinforcing something that the audience already knows. Because this is the only thing that they see from yours, it feels a little off that, 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 that there's no indication of that light source. So I would throw it in just to kind of tie it into the environment a little bit. But yeah, but getting those, those like the colors back here kind of creeping into her will make a big, big, big difference. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Let's continue on. We got lots to go through. We got. Uh, let's go to Annabelle next. So Annabelle um, and Andre, thank you for submitting this. That was really good. Um, Annabelle, so making progress. This is looking better each with each iteration. Good job with the displacement on the wall. That looks a lot better. Um, the one I'm so thing. So happy I finally got it to work. work. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like one of those things that you're like. Uh, it's it's always funny when. I do this all the time too, where I think something is working and someone's like, hey, that, that thing, like the displays on that, it doesn't seem to be working. You're like, no, it definitely is. And they're like, is it though? Because it doesn't quite. <laughs> so it's like, but you're you're in it, you know what I mean? So you get kind of, because you're like, you've already crossed oh, it off yeah. your to-do list or something. And you're like, oh, and then you go back and you're like, oh, wait, no, I didn't actually set that up right. So it looks a thousand, a thousand, thousand percent better now. Uh, cool. Well, I'm glad because at first, yeah, I thought it was absolutely working, but then I realized, yeah, I'm like, yeah, it looks a bit flat in the corner. I'm yeah. Like, uh, okay, it's not working. <laughs> yeah, that helps quite a bit. Um, the only so I was looking at this shot, and I'm starting to feel and feel free to disagree with me, anybody. I'm feeling like it might be getting a little too heavy in the contrast. Like it's feeling a, like it's, it's just like I feel like in some of these darks, it's getting a little too, too punchy dark, and I would like to see that. Again, office space, lots of overhead light. I feel like there would be a little bit more, like less. Um, it's it, it feels almost like an ambient occlusion thing, but just like less of that. That I don't know. What do you guys think? Specifically, more in the foreground so maybe too. Maybe I should I like put it less, like the ambient occlusion. Maybe I put it too heavy. Possibly, yeah. Well, basically, like what I really, really like 
the look of this off the office back by the window a little bit like this like key to fill ratio back there with just like a little bit of tight spec or tight shadow right around the edge looks really good it's just that as we get in here those dark values really start to expand um and you don't you, it kind of it kind of gets a little bit heavy uh in the image but personal that's my personal preference i want to hear i want to hear if other people disagree with that yeah, yeah well, personally um with, with aces, aces there's more contrast i don't use ambient occlusion at all mm -hmm. sometimes so, so it might be worth, worth taking off and seeing if it's like, like if you're lacking, lacking definition, definition somewhere you can add it but it, it might, might work, work without it, it. yeah because because theoretically ambient occlusion was a d yeah. was put in place before like uh more robust secondary like it was meant it was meant to fake something that that renders couldn't duplicate that now they can and sometimes by adding it yeah you're just doubling down on what's already taking place so i would say i would say pull up pull off of it like it's looking good on the environment but just definitely on the characters i would pull back on it Oh, okay, cool. So, so like, like, yeah, maybe, maybe I could make, make like a, a, sam uh, a separate like ambient occlusion, like for the background and one for the characters, mm -hmm. maybe. So that way, like, I could adjust a little bit better. For sure. Or, you, or, or if you have like a crypto mat, you can, you can uh, downplay it on the character. Oh yeah, that's that. true. If, if you don't want to like re-render, yeah. <laughs> and then just watch out in the comp. Make sure you're not getting a double up on the alpha, because like it's probably hard for you guys to see, but there is a little bit of a black outline around both characters. And so just check. Just yeah, I was wondering how do you get, get rid of that? Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty new to Nuke, nuke so yeah. I, I find it like it, it happens a lot, but I'm not yeah. sure like what to do to like get rid of it. The biggest, so let me hop back into Nuke here. So one of the things like, let's say, let's say I had this, I had two, like let's just as an example, I've got um, two versions of the same character. Um, you know, like let's say one is the just like a pass of her, just like key light, and one is like one is super bright, and this is like her fill light or something. And I wanna I wanna add them together. Uh, there's, obviously, there's different ways of doing this, but um, the way that I always do it, like if I just want to plus these two values together, now we get something super bright. But what, what can happen if we layer this over top? of an image is you can start to see like some of these black lines start to form. It's a little little tough here, but um, you can start to see like a little bit of a jagged line. And that's because th this alpha, let's see, we'll, we'll, we'll zoom in here. Let's see if I can select these. So like looking at this alpha, like this right here is, um, you know, you can see it's like point, like I'm looking right down here. It's like, you know, 0.05 point, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then if, and then this other image is the same image and it has the exact same alpha value. But then when you plus them together, you can see the alpha did change slightly, right? It's because those yeah, alpha like values are being really added together. And that's actually, so now instead of it being a slightly transparent alpha that's just picking up the edge of her, now it's picking in some of these darker values too, right? Because the alpha is now thicker than it was before. Oh, okay. does, that, does that make sense a little bit? <clears throat> and and oh, it, yeah, it doesn't really happen too much. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really happen too much if you just do it once. But if you do it again and again and again, it like it like compounds. Um, so the way that I fix that is like I've got I've got this image coming in the A side, this image coming in the B side. Uh, what I how I fix it is this little drop down right here, because this is saying in the A channel bring in the red, green, blue, and alpha, and in the B channel bring in the red, green, blue, and alpha. Anytime I use a plus operator, it like I have to ask myself, do I really want to plus the alpha channels together? And in this case, I don't, which means so for like one of them, I'll just bring in the RGBA, and that'll and then I'll snap it back into place. See that? Or copy. Yeah, or you can or yeah, or you can do a channel copy as well. Yeah, that's very good too. Oh, okay. So basically, you're just like removing the the alpha from the the red channel, so it's, it yeah. makes it so it doesn't like. Or, or you can do something like that and, and bring in the alpha for Yeah, that. or like right before you merge it over, mm -hmm. take the alpha from the original image, like one of them, yeah. and copy it back into like your edit yeah. chain. And then it'll use the original alpha. But, Maybe you don't get rid of it. 
but that's that also happen when you like, like um is it, is it only when you do like the plus operation? operation does it also happen when you like uh, do merge something over something else or is it really only for the plus that it does it i don't over is fine. yeah i don't think it does it for over right I, i've never had a problem with over before because i think it's just like a different math operation yeah. yeah. So it's mostly like plusing that uh, that affects mostly the alpha. Yeah, but that that's that's how I handle it. So like, because again, like nuke is nothing, especially the merge operations are just math. You just have to like it's a it's just like why is this coming together? And you're like, oh, it's plusing and plusing and plusing and taking these semi-transparent alpha edges and like making them thicker and thicker and thicker. It's like. I'm trying to think of what that would be oh, like. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. When you and, think about it. Yeah, and then and then once once it gets so thick, like if you did it a bunch of times, it would just be like a any any pixel that has any sort of transparency all of a sudden becomes a dense white, and then it's just pulling in black value. And so I think that's that's why it's getting that look. Well, thank you for explaining it. At least now I know. Uh, no, so what's it, took, going on with my image. it took me a very long time to be able to explain that. I definitely I was just like, ah, why is it? I don't because because it would just be a note. <laughs> <clears throat> and Ryan's like, check your, check your alpha edge. I'm like, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't, I really don't wanna. Yeah. <laughs> like I just, like and I, I, my, my thing was always like, are you kidding me? Look at the rest of the image I made. Look at all the rest of it. And you're worried about this one pixel line around the edge. I would get frustrated. But uh, that was just me being an immature. I'm much better now. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. But yeah, this is looking, this is looking great overall. How, how are the render times on this? Are you gonna, are you gonna be able to do a, a low res pass of the whole thing? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do, uh, do a low res. Um, for the high res, I might have to like use a render farm like the, the one that uh, you were suggesting the other day. Mm -hmm. I think I'll check it out because it'll probably be too much for my computer. But for the low one, I think I should be okay. okay. Um, I think it takes like about three minutes per frame from when I do it in the low settings. It's not bad. That's, that's, that seems overnightable. Like day or two. Yeah. I also found in Maya this weekend you can render by so many frames. Yeah. So you can, you can render, render by two or by threes, and like you'll, you'll you just get more of a feeling that way, right? And you're cutting your render time for a low res by a half or a third or whatever. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we do that a lot. Or we did like it was a balance between rendering low res and then sometimes you do a larger resolution, but every fourth frame, eighth frame, tenth frame, whatever. Um, again, and it also depends on like how much this shot has has a lot of motion, so it might be. Um, but, but it's also like it moves and then you, you hang in one area for a while, then you move and you hang in another area for a while. So you could probably get away with doing it every fourth or eighth frame and get a good feel of how the light yeah, moves. Yeah, that it is moving a lot so much. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Also, there's another thing I was wondering, like motion blur. Do I, is that something I have to test out before I do like the high res or like, is that something that's pretty easy to like just integrate into my high res when I'm like done with the low res? I would test it. Um, just because, uh. I, yeah, I, I would I would at least do like a 10 frame test at some point in it just because it can be, it also increases the render time. It's it's a tough one because it increases the render time. Um, and then once it's like baked in there, um, it's in there, right? And so it's like, you kind of can't really fix it in post if it goes haywire. Um, so I would, I, yeah, I mean, in the studio, we don't add motion blur until it goes into final render, but that's because we have time to go back and re-render it if we need to. If you don't, I would definitely do some tests before I kick off the final render. Okay, cool. So like, like you said, um, when I'm when I'm, when I'm like, like at my final render, I should like test like ten frames to see if yeah. it looks good, and then uh... yeah, through I would do like ten frames during a heavy motion time, like when he's kind of bouncing from one side to the other, and then maybe another ten frame test when he's just kind of like talking to make sure that, because like. Every once in a while, animators can set a sub-pixel keyframe. So like, because sometimes they'll, uh, not sub-pixel, a sub-frame keyframe. Uh, and so it'll like cause like halfway through a frame a character to like jump. Like, I don't know, like they can, straight keyframes are your enemy during motion blur because it'll calculate that in and all of a sudden there's just like this really wild streak. Um, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> So, but like you never. Really in that case, I should have tested in the low render, render then, <laughs> just to be but sure like, that the but, whole thing is looking good. But honestly, it depends on the style of the animation. If this is somebody who's just um, like for something like this, I don't think they would do that. It's just like sometimes in um, uh, on animated films, they really like they really break it down to a like I said a subframe keyframe level. But most people don't do that. I think you're fine. I think you're fine. 
Um, oh, okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Let's, uh, we'll hop next into Danny. So, Danny, we've got two versions here for you. We've got a daytime. I, will call, I was just calling it daytime and, and the, the, the nighttime one, the one that we've been looking at. Um, so with this, let's start here. So, there was also another pass where you, that you can get more volumetric from the window. Oh, just to see. I saw, so I saw I saw that there were a couple of. Um, I thought these were the same. Maybe I'm crazy. They look like the same. It's just the volumetric in the window a little okay. bit. That's the only difference. Make sure I got the right one. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I like I like a little bit more of the volumetric in the window. Cool, cool. I like that. Yeah, because um, this is a little bit less. Yeah, the only two things that I'm thinking. Number one is I see like the 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 couches look starting to look a little bit washed out from the fireplace. Like this part of the couch looks like a different color. That one, I wanted to maintain a little bit more of its red color in there. And two, I still want to go brighter with the area around the fireplace. Change that color, it's a little bit too yellow. Something more like that that'll get us back in this region here because I still feel like we're getting lost in the foreground elements and maybe toning down this light a little bit more. What do you guys think? Cool. cool. Back to the team. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it looks, it looks good. good. Like that with a little bit more glow. Yeah. It definitely it makes, makes it feel like, like there's uh, like a real fire. fire. Like there's, there's a lot of warmth, warmth coming through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this, this here almost looks like subsurface scattering on this couch. And I like that it has like a peach fuzz type of an element to it. Like it feels kind of velvety, but it is, it's just, it's just changing its color too much for something that's a little more rich. Yeah, it's kind of washing it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And then for your daytime one, um, looking at the reference, I just think, and again, to make it feel different than the other one, I definitely, like we definitely need to like kind of fill the room with a little bit more light. Like, cause this yeah, one, yeah. I mean, obviously this one has more windows. Um, but it is exposed for the interior space. And again, I talk about the slot, but like you can see how the exteriors are kind of blown out a little bit. Um, but we definitely need to feel the light rattling around inside that room a little bit more because it, it, it feels like it comes in and hits here and it kind of goes around the room, but like, it's not, um, it's not like, this is still causing shadowing here and like some shaping going on here. Um, and like, and where this is kind of just entering this space and then there's not much, it is like some illumination, but not a lot of shaping that's being caused from it. So I think, I think you can push that a little bit stronger in there. This one, this one was more, I have questions about. So first question, which is like shooting myself in the foot. Does it make sense that the window is the height of the stairs that are cut? You're coming from outside. Yeah. So you are like sort of underground and you have a window that is in the, in the middle of the ground. Oh, th these? Yeah, I think. Oh, are you talking about this window over here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with because it's like if you live in a hilly place, you're used to seeing that because it's like the house will be okay. built on like the side of a thing. So I, I, that doesn't bother me too much. Also, yeah, it feels. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, okay good. I think, I think, it, I think <laughs> that's a. Was that? <laughs> I think, think that you're, that you're in a castle, castle tower, tower, so you're coming down from a yeah. higher floor, but you're still on the ground. That's true, you're just on the second floor. It's a castle. Uh, 34. There you go. <laughs> okay. I'll solve the problem for you. Yeah, because let me tell you yeah. something. If you have a room like this in your home, you've got more than one level. You know what I mean? Like, you've got... <laughs> yeah, it could be a balcony, too. Yeah. Like a door from a balcony or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good point, too. So, um, B, I just, I just really want to infuse this space with more light. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Danny. And another thing I want to ask you, since the, the, the light source is very small, uh -huh. like, I, 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 can, I, can I can get it, it I can get it, it like, mm, 
it, it lights it, it could light up almost until, until the picture and then the rest of it I had to put in an extra bounce light. Mm. And the problem with bounce light is that it's since, since I wanted to light up a lot, it's harder to create shaping with it. So, so should, should I try, try to make the key light bigger, bigger like I could stick it more into, into the room? room? Or, or should, should I just, just put, put more, more bounces? bounces? More bounces. I mean, and a lot of it is, is it, it will be, I mean, kind of both, actually. Like, like this could go a little bit brighter. Um, and then, but like, I, I'm not sure that the natural bounces you're going to get out of that light are going to be enough. Like, it would be a matter of adding some uh, bounce light in there, like another light source in there. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's what I have now. now. Yeah. I have the key and I have the bounce. The bounce. And is the where's the the bounce is like a big area light down here? Uh, it's it's you can, you can see, see right, right behind the, the table. table there's, there's like a hardish line. line. Yeah, that's, that's where, where the area light is. is. Yeah. Okay. I'm wondering. Um, um just, just a thought. thought. It, it might, might help, help because, because that window, window like, like your reference, like Mike was saying, the windows are much bigger. bigger. You're 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 getting, you're getting two. two you're, you're still having only two sources of light. light. So maybe. maybe try to have more of a directional light so we can see kind of maybe what time of day it is coming in through the window and then decide how much light you actually want coming in daylight from the door because if it's if it's day is, is it daylight coming in like there's a window behind the, the stairs that's bringing in all that light or is it a hallway light um and, and you know the, the, the bars on the window, window would cause some shadows on the walls, I would think too, depending on the angle that the sunlight's coming in. It's more that the, so, so maybe, it, maybe play around with figuring out directional. Yeah, for me, for me, it's more about the, if the sun the sun's off camera that way, and therefore the light's coming in this way, and therefore like this is more about like the light's still going that way out there. So then this is just going to be bright. And then because of that yeah, brightness, yeah. it'll kind of bleed around the edge a little bit. But this shouldn't be giving us too much directionality. Like there will be light that comes in that way, but it w I, I would, and there'll be like a softer shadow. But in terms of like this level of cast shadow down there, we really kind of want all those to be filtering that one direction, I think. Um, yeah, because so for me, for me, it's more about getting more bounce in this room than just wrong with that a little bit. Maybe if he's not already using an HDR, it might help a little bit with like some light portals to help yeah. add some light coming in. Yeah, that's true. Cool, cool. But yeah, yeah. Keep, keep, keep light coming in this room. That would be my. That's my. That's my advice for this one. All right, we got cool. another. Thank you. Yeah, we got another from Diana. This guy's bringing a whole new vibe to the uh, to the critique. I don't. You know what it is? It's because his mustache is a slightly different color than his hair. Like, he dyes his mustache? That's, like, my first thing I think when I see this guy. That's the first thing? First thing. Like, this is a dude that dyes his mustache? He just, with, like, a little brush, just gets in there after it. And then he spends the rest of his day selling used cars. And yeah, he um, always... Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he just, he just loves that. Um, so, I think, I think this is really pretty. Um... I think that the lighting on it is like the the window light coming in is 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 just that kind of perfect balance of um, directional to indicate time of day, but you really feel like the lights passing through a pane of glass and being diffused a little bit, right? Like I think that's I think that's looking really good. Um, I. Can you tell me like can you tell me more about like the mood? Because the one the one question that I have is it's a pretty um, I don't, I don't want to use the word sterile, but it's just like, it's a, like, what mood are you going for? Cause it's, it's not, it's not like super apparent to me right now. And I want, I'm wondering yeah, if we yeah. can push that. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and it, it turned, turned out like, like with, with the, the blue, blue and, and the warm, warm it's, it's like very pretty, pretty, but it's more, he's, he's, he's making a joke. joke. Okay. It's supposed to be kind of light, light and, and funny and, and, and whimsical is the, is the word that I was using. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It doesn't necessarily feel yeah, super yeah. light winds, but like I, I don't, I don't know if we need to go. Um, 
and and you know for that because I do I like I love the color of the wall. I think it's I think it's working really well with the skin tone. I think it might just be getting a little bit more um, fill light on them then, like and just kind mm-hmm. of filling them in just like a touch more, um, and seeing how that plays out a little bit. But it, like it feels very natural. Um, I'm just like I I om- and the other thing too is I almost want. Uh, like more detail on the wall if that's possible like because there's no like right now there's no outlets there's no baseboards there's no um and it just it it feels like the wall is missing something to me Mm -hmm. but but that's 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 just like that's just me being nitpicky just because there's like thought to what's going on with the desktop like there's the pen and the glasses and the paper and everything but like back there it feels it feels a little bit different but like yeah, I mean the lighting looks good. I really don't. I really don't want to steer you away too much from what you have because I think it's. I think it's working really well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that makes sense. sense. Yeah. Like, there's, like, there's also, also some frames, frames where the, the fill is not, not as. So, so I'll, I'll look at it. it. Yeah, I mean, because like he he's also prob- like depend like judging by the framing, he might be as fill influenced as he possibly will be in that he's like on the far side of the frame, like looking kind of away from it, like in kind of the darkness over there and he might pop forward and that might change the dynamic on him. So we might be yeah. we might be witnessing him in his like moodiest state. <laughs> no, 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 there's a moodier frame. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, that's, so, that's, so, so I will look at that. And, and, I'll, and I'll do a, do a sequence so we can see Good. that too. And I, I'm, I'm, and I'm lighting to this guy a little bit as we talk about him more. It was just the first take on him. Why is his mustache so funny? Um, yeah, but no, I think this, I think this looks really great. Does anybody else have any notes? The only other thing I was wondering. Nine, yeah. Oh, good. I think the closet is floating. The, the cabinet is floating a bit. Oh, oh yeah, it has legs, but I can just sit it down. Yeah. I think, and then like the material on the desktop, I was I was questioning what that was, just because yeah. it's like it feels like metallic, like brushed metal. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll work it. it. That's it. Really good stuff, though, man. Thank, thank you. All right. Uh, so we have, let's see. So Jeff is down here. We got Aaron, Annabelle, and Ashley. Okay. Cat, uh, you're up next, so we'll skip. This is the same, same character as cats. That, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, I thought yeah, that familiar. We're, We're seeing him in like three weeks. Like, yeah, yeah, same yeah. Briggs t-shirt, same, shirt. same, yeah. same yeah. pants. So I'll just make my shirt look, look like yours, yours and just be happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I think. Like, I was wondering where I stole that character from. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's the, the same, same one, one from like the hat shot that I did. It's just Apollo's, Apollo's everywhere. everywhere. Is that his name Apollo? Uh, yeah. 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 I I think yeah. I mean. I think it's the, the mustache that, that changes him. <laughs> yeah. It's a fake mustache though, clearly. <laughs> He just glued yeah. it on. You're really looking at it. You are. It's so funny. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I want to just like talk about his mustache. Oh, like in a double smile? Yeah. I'm just being honest, man. That's just where my eyes went. All right. So, Kat, so we've got a bunch of different uh, iterations. Um, so the one thing I was thinking about with yours, and I, I pulled in some reference too. So, so backstory for everyone else, um, this is... Uh, like a film noir thing we're going it's going to be black and white by the animator's uh, suggestion or uh, I don't know if it's suggestion or direction and the one thing I really anytime that you're working with uh, black and white images it's all about getting good strong uh, value like understanding the value of the shot and, and with that I mean like the light to dark value fall off thing like making sure that we're like it doesn't have to be a fully like fleshed out, lots of darks, lots of lights, everything in between, but just having control of it and an understanding of it. Um, is one of the things that when I'm looking at this, uh, you know, like an image like this, I know that we're still working on it, but and this is just like the early iterations, but it's, all, but it's all about like how I'm not feeling any like super brights in this yet. Like I'm not, like the, the light itself doesn't feel, like even that feels uh, kind of gray. Um, and seeing things more uh, in like a brighter, and like this is obviously too much on him, but like seeing that in that brighter realm. So what I, what I really wanted to do uh, with this is I wanted to pull in some reference of 
of things that I that I found um, and things that I really like. And again, black and white, it always like goes back to um, uh, again, like I said, like these value ranges. And one of the things that that comes up with this is that Enzel Adams and others uh, used to utilize the zone system, and I in photography and the zone system is, is is just a numeric system from zero to ten. Zero being like kind of pure blacks, and and ten being like a pure white. And then the rest of the values kind of fall in between. So it's a way of analyzing an image of like, you know, you can see like this area is zone three, zone five, zone six, zone two. Like, and it's like making sure that you're getting a full tonal range across the entire image. Um, and so I thought about, I was thinking about that a lot. And then like for me, the photographer that kind of encapsulates rich, pure kind of color, I'm sorry, tones in a black and white image is like Richard Avedon. So, um, I love his work. I think that like the, you, you kind of get that, that color range of, of um, the value range of the full zone system. Uh, he has a really strong um, ability to like keep some of the, the toned down values down here and like really focus in on the brighter values up there. Um, and like really, oof, I, got, I got close, but just like seeing this light to dark fall off, seeing the shaping, seeing like these value differences. Um, and his work is so incredibly strong. And so like, I kind of wanted to, when I thought about yours, like really approaching it with an understanding that we really need to get like these strong, rich um, details. Cause again, it's, uh, it's, it's not about, um, let me go back to this. Uh, it, Cause it's not about, like I said, you know, we're, we're totally early in this process, um, but it's, it's starting to, to like really think about creating a lighting setup that's going to allow for us to hit those 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 ideas, um, and so yeah, I mean like something like this could really work um, if we allow those to get brighter, if we allow this to get brighter, and then um, like I said, using like I think that this could be cool if he has this for this value up here, but then as he steps down, gets into like a brighter, more um, a more value centric, like a, a brighter area. Like this would obviously have to leave this area into brightness from the beginning and then have him move into that lighted space. Um, yeah. And because it, then it's all about like uh, how you want those things to work. And then once he gets in here, then this light is looks like it's coming in kind of from his screen left side. So it'd be more about coming in from his, his opposite cheek there. Um, so it's really, really how you want to play that up. Um, but I would just continue to, to, for you as you're going through this and as you're lighting this to keep, um, evaluating the black and white image based on that full, based on the value range. Well, well, I guess, I guess my, my question, question is, is, should, should I, I just basically make, make the, the image, image itself in the render, just make it all black and white, so don't bother with colors on the textures, and then light it for black and white there, or should I light it like this, and then do it in post as far as the black and white? I, I mean, because good. I, I guess too, because like if I make if I'm lighting for black and white in render, render would, I would I be making it a little, it a little brighter, brighter so then I could play with the contrast more in black and white or do I light it how I want it to look in the final image and then, and then just switch, switch it to black and white. white. So if you're, if you're confident, to figure out the process. if you're confident that you're never going to want to see this, like if you only want this to be black and white, then I would do it black and white from the beginning. I would, I would, I would switch it out and then just okay. take away I mean, the, I wouldn't mind having a version of it color. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, like think of, think of, uh, yeah. Let me pull this up. So like a movie like a Sin City, right? Uh, they did all of that look um, in in post. Did you film? Okay, okay. Um, I see this. See if this comes up. So like when they shot it, it looked nothing like this. Like it'll look, that's Pauly Shore, that's not it. Um, <laughs> Sin City <laughs> um, as shot, I'm blanking on how I would call this. So, so basically when, yeah, so like the film looks like this kind of stuff, right? Like it's, it's pretty filled in. There's not a lot of, mm -hmm. um, 
they, they shoot it in color. There's not a lot of uh, contrast in there. And then all, all of this contrast that kind of starts to read in is all built in the comp. So you have that option. You could do it that way if you want. Okay. For me, um, if like, okay. but if you're going to um, be, you know, if if your end if your end product is black and white, then it makes sense to me to do it that throughout the entire process. So because like it doesn't matter. If, like it's like it's like it's like adding textures or something that's off camera. It just doesn't matter to the final look. Okay. Okay. So, so then. then- as far as, as, far as texturing, texturing and stuff, stuff go, to get, to get more value, value, am I going to need to have more spec, more spec and, and stuff, stuff on it so that there's more light reflecting off of it to, to kind of pop up that contrast in black and white? Yeah, yeah, because like if okay. if because okay. well, what we're seeing, uh, go back to one of these black and whites, because what we're seeing out of this is like, you know, th- this this area of his face. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's not there's there's very little there's there's a minimal amount of value range in there because it's, it's kind of flattening out because it's just diffuse right and when we have right, the right. full color range you can get some subtle subtle color variations in there but we don't have that luxury here okay. we need it to be value differences and that and that comes in a lot like I said with yeah like you said with specularity and that kind of thing um, okay okay yeah so you will yeah you will have to dial in like a little bit more of that spec stuff in there. Okay. All right. All right. So, so I'll have, I'll to, have mess to mess with it a little, little bit. bit. But I mean, I, I, would, I like would like a color version just for my, for my own stuff. stuff but I know that they're planning to do like a short film. film. So, so this is, is kind of like, like mm-hmm. they want it to be in that black and white. Vibe. Yeah. I, and, and so, and, and for that, like you can definitely, uh, yeah, you can definitely do both and like definitely render this color and then, and then, uh, and then strip away in, 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 in comp or in, in, the, in the composite and nuke or whatever you're using. Okay. Uh, right, but right. just, yeah, just know that they're like, you wouldn't light them the same potentially because of, right. like I said, of the, of the emphasis on the two different things. Right. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Oh, well, and then we'll jump. Uh, so, I mean, oh, good. Okay. Okay. Um, as far as, far as, as the lighting, lighting goes I mean, I mean obviously I didn't mess much with, much with the lighting mm-hmm. should, I should I bring in more fill, fill at all or, or have, have this be darker, darker? Like, like the, 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 the area that's gonna the area that he's gonna be into mm-hmm. more, dark. more dark I think yeah, I listen then, I, I because of the film noir style of this you can go more contrast um but but it okay. but it but it's uh in like allow you know brighter brights dark darks kind of thing and and less in the midtones um but okay. Uh, but yeah, like, but you definitely, yeah, you, you, you definitely have two distinct lighting areas in this. Like when he's standing up up here and then as he steps down closer with this lamp right here, clearly that that's right. going to influence him. Uh, this just needs to be brighter. Again, it's on his screen right side. So it'll kind of, it'll hit some of him directly, but a lot of it will be bouncing up onto this side of his face and whether or not you want this light to affect him when he comes down here, it's up to you guys. But I do, for me, it's about like window light affecting him up here mm-hmm. and then he steps out of that and into this light in the foreground okay okay should, should i add, add a little, little extra fill on, on the chest, chest because, because when, when i make it more, more contrasty the, the gun, gun and, and his arm is blocking out a bunch of that chest so it gets oddly, oddly shadowed. shadowed so should, so should, would I, should, I, should I put a bit more fill on that just so it doesn't look so wonky like if you look at the black and white version of that it's super weird that first shot yeah, yeah, it just, just kind of looks wonky, wonky I think. Um, it's more shaping, so maybe you see that it's a gun holster. You know, it could be like a thing of as this light gets brighter, there could be just some like indications of stuff in there. I think that oh, I think okay. I think that that would probably be the way I would do that, because like as this light as this light gets a lot brighter, it'll create more light, which will create like I think that light will start to penetrate into his stance out there a little bit. Okay. So maybe, so maybe do a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but but get the get get the desk light looking right first, and then and then evaluate how much fill there is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's hop over to Tristan. Tristan, I see you had another one up too. Another. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, it's the older version. Okay. Uh, just, uh, just oh, two, got it. Two. Grab it real quick. Okay. 
All right. So. Okay, cool. This is the older version and newer. This is the newer. The darker one is the newer one. Got it. The newer, newer, older, newer, older, newer. Got it. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so actually, actually, the darker one is a, uh, is a mocap. Um, I'm really, I'm really having, having a hard time. time. Um, I, I thought the plane and the frames were uh, the, focus, the, focus, the focus enough in the image. image. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, I, really I really tried to darken, darken the foreground um, so uh, that these, these elements pop off. Um, um, but the thing, but the thing is, 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 I'm really struggling, struggling uh, with have, have, having the having shaping, shaping on the object in the foreground while yeah. well, making sure, sure they don't distract with your... Yeah, I think I actually think that, um, like, if you want to go with this... Oh, my one. Like, I think having a little bit of this in here is, is really all you need with like the darkness back in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, because it, it's just a matter of getting a little bit of like a kiss of that um, specularity, a touch of just like the, the diffuse in there. It's just, it's just enough so nothing gets like too dark and blown. I like, I think this looks pretty good like that. My only concern was how much specularity was hitting this lamp before i would just like rough that up a little bit just because it feels like super metallic um and then and then same thing with the front of this glass so it was it was it was more just about like getting some general kind of like broad uh fill type variation in there um okay, okay. in terms of the the background uh yeah i think it's i think i think you're right I think kind of combining what we had before with what we have now. Just, I'm just looking at the read of the plane. Mm -hmm. I think that works. So this, this yeah, darker right there. Yeah, I think that works. I think we can make that okay. work. Okay. So, so it could be a combination of both. Yeah, it's it's it, that ends up with what it ends up being is just a combination of both. What do you guys think? I agree. Definitely, definitely combining, combining both, both would be really, really good because, because the, when, with the dark, the dark one is just we lose a lot of, lot of like, like we, we, we kind of don't, don't really, really get an understanding of what's in the, in the, the objects uh, that are in the darker area, area of the photo. Of the photo. So, so I feel like a mix of both would be good. I do. I also like the value on like something. This is little, but uh, I like the I like the balloon. The other one too. Because <laughs> 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 because it yeah. It's just like it starts to get too. We just kind of lose that a little bit. Like it's it's a subtle color tweak, but just like a little bit more of that red in there. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, but I agree. I think this is, yeah. I think you're on the right path. I think that was a good call. Okay. It is that's why it is important to save iterations sometimes, is to go back and make sure that you're not straying too far away from 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 your original intent. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's finish up with, um, we've got a couple more. Let me make sure, let me go backwards here. So I'll start with Montgomery. Um, this is the previous version, this is the update. I think you're definitely hitting the notes. Like you can see the, probably it probably is a subsurface going down a little bit because you like just looking at the nose, like you can really see how much more shadow and shaping is in there. And again, this is the, the reference from that. Um, so I would encourage you with the next iteration is to try and work some more of the, uh, like, again, depending on how you want to do this, I would work more of the blue color in um, a little bit more strongly into the scene if you can. Now, it's it's tricky because, like, if you look at these characters, there's still, uh, still warmth in their in their skin tones. Um, but I would, I would perhaps try and work a little bit more of that coolness into the scene kind of overall. I think I just because I think like similar to what we were seeing in, um, in oh I didn't mess that up in, similar to what we were seeing in Diana's um, like this kind of like warm over the cooler background kind of thing I think by adding more uh, more saturation to it and just kind of boosting that up a little bit we can we can really kind of get those th those to play off of each other a little bit. Um, 
and this is a weird thing with this character's rig is sometimes like I want I want this line down his arm to be straight. Like it's like a, just like a little wobbly. It does it all the time, and I don't know what it is about about him. Ang, I think his name is, but Ang's arm, like it just it just like it's a. So I don't know if I don't know if you can nudge that or just just, <laughs> just squeeze it into place. I think that would be good. Uh, do you guys have any have any other notes for him? Anything you're seeing? And then and then try and squeeze some eye things in there too. Oh, that's too big. Something like that. Like those little bits can 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 go a long way. That's great. A right, really good job. Really strong work, man. Uh, right. So I sh Tristan, it, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go through each one of these just to make sure we don't miss anybody. Cool. We get all cats, and we've got Jeremy. Okay, Jeremy. So biggest thing for me. Uh, with your environment versus the reference is the sky is number one. So it's really hard to evaluate. Like if, if like this is what you're going for, so much of this image is about the sky and, and the way that that's playing in and because that light influences the scene and everything's kind of coming together and like it's causing that light wrap and now there's flares and things are glowing and everything's kind of interacting. But now when we look at this, like if we're seeing this much of the space kind of just be mid-tone gray, um, it's really hard to get our to get our mind wrapped around that a little bit. Now, the lighting setup is going to be a little bit different because we've got the light coming in this way as opposed to seeing the light source, which we were in the last one. Um, but, uh, but you still, like, I still just kind of, like, I'm, it just, it doesn't feel like the sky would be this dark over here. Maybe I'm way off, but, like, it feels like there would be a lot more of this color mixed in there, uh, like, seeing some of that warmth. Um, or, at least, or at least just some sort of variation so it's not just a, a solid color. Uh, so that would be one. Number two is like looking at how much saturation there is in the fill areas caused from lights like this. And I think that you could work some of that in too. So like the way that these lights are kind of neutral and just kind of isolated down there, it would be cool to work in more of that like super saturated purple color into the fill value. And then the third big thing is just the overall um, kind of softness that we're seeing and like kind of haze and and all that stuff would be would be really important to work in and some volumetric lights too. Um, but that, that's that's the the biggest the 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 three the three biggest things that I would work on again sky, um, trying to get like an overall haze glow and then trying to work some of those really nice saturated purples uh, from these types of lights into the rest of the scene. I would, I would say also, also with the with sky, the sky is getting reflections on the glass, glass getting, getting the, the, yeah, the yellow so you can really see it. see it. That's a really good point. Yeah, like, re like really, really feel like, cause it, the one thing that like, if I, if I, so one of the things that like, if I just looked at this image, the first thing that I feel like is the light, it's just like, it's, like, it's encompassing everything. Like it's almost hugging you as the viewer it's just like wrapping around everything uh and there's there's like a, a lot of bleed in the colors between the different spaces like nothing in this image is living in isolation from everything else everything is kind of fused together and then when i look at something like this it feels like individual components like okay i see a light there i see a character there i see this there i see and like it feels like individual components where, where something like this feels like there's you know like a like a just like a hodgepodge homogeny of, of values and light and color kind of all kind of swimming together because because there's like this much like fog and and color bleed between the elements so so that's i think it's i think it's a really cool um uh uh target to shoot for if you need help if you have questions about how to do that let us know and like i said i can show uh if you're curious i, I can if you want to send over some individual elements i can take them into a comp and show you kind of how to build that look if, if that's what if you'd be interested in that all right, and finally we have Jeff. Uh, so last update. So I think uh, I'm definitely starting to see some more specularity in here. I think that's looking really good. Um, I just I just I'm wondering if we can't get a little more like warmth in her skin tone. It feels a little. 
metallic to me. I, I just I just want to get like a little bit more uh, red value in her skin. Just like into that range. Just like, just like a, it's like a tiny, tiny touch, but just a little bit. Cause like, I think, cause you're working right on that border of that, like, um, where it starts again, it starts to kind of feel more metallic -y and less, uh, less like there's blood beneath the skin. But other than that, I think the, the flares are looking really good. The ground's looking really good. Um, that is a very clean ground. I'm wondering if, what do you guys, if there's, if, and again, this, this depends on the story that you're telling, but for me, I want to add some smudges to that ground or something to it, but I'll let you, but maybe you can disregard that. Uh, what do you guys think? Is there any, any other advice here? I think it's good. Um, um, are there, are there items, items on the ice or? Uh, oh yeah, we could do, sure. yeah, that's a good point. We could do more eye work. Um, sorry, I was kind of looking at everything else. The, yes, totally. Here we go. So like the items as they exist right now, there's like one over here, one inside here. Uh, just re like eliminate what you have now and then let's just do it this way. Um, just gonna... Stamp this. Oh. Yeah, weird. Why is it not letting me just rubber stamp? It's so strange. Whatever. Um, ugh, fine. I would just, I was going to do a fancier version of just like adding idings like here. Actually, it would be, you know what? Because it's, we've got the light coming in from this side. I would put them here. I'd put one here. And then tone down this, and then just put like a softer one here. And that's that would be how I would do that. And you can eliminate the existing ones. It's confusing now that there's multiple there, but, um, but yeah, but yeah. So yeah, just keep them on the key side, um, and then I would go from there. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for today. Great job. I will get. Thank you, Diana and Forrest, again for this weekend. You guys are amazing. Uh, I will get that video posted later today as well, along with this critique. So if anyone missed uh, the AAACCC from this weekend, <laughs> uh, you guys will we can definitely check. It's the Academy of Animated Art critique, chill, Com and community good. Critique and community, chill. Chill. community critique and chill. <laughs> it's perfect. I love it so much. That was fun. That was yeah. And yeah, I was, really cool. I, I, when I, I popped open the video this morning, uh, and I was, I was like, why are there, like, there's so many more people than I usually get. You guys are so much more popular than me. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, but no, it was, it was really great. You guys are, it's, uh, I love this community more than I can ever say. Uh, and it just made me so happy. It just made me really happy to see it. So, thank you. yeah, thank you guys so much. Okay, you all enjoy your Monday, and I will see you all tomorrow as I drop my Wacom pen. Take care, guys. Bye. All right. All right.